Would you take out your Bibles this morning and turn with me to Matthew chapter 1. Matthew chapter 1, the first book in the New Testament, the first chapter in that first book. Matthew chapter 1. And then after you find Matthew chapter 1, just go ahead and mark that spot. After you find that Matthew chapter 1, mark that spot and then look up Luke chapter 1. Just a few gospels over. As I heard Paulette this morning saying, over to the right. Amen. Praise God, over to the right. Luke chapter 1 and put your mark right there. This morning we're going to begin a brand new, a brand new series of messages uh, this morning that have, a, that have an obvious title. An obvious title. The title of this series of messages this morning is Christmas. Christmas. But what's not so obvious is the way in which these messages, we're going to take a look at these messages about Christmas. You see, there is a nostalgic, kind of sentimental way for us to look at Christmas, right? And it's wonderful, it's good. Just a, a, a way that kind of warms our hearts, a way that, that, that uh, joins us to God that makes us appreciate so much the Lord Jesus Christ and the gift that God has given us through Jesus, through the birth of our Lord, through, uh, through his sacrifice on the cross. There's just a, a wonderful, nostalgic way of looking at Christmas. I love it. Uh, we enjoy it. It's got its proper place. But, but that's not what we're going to be looking at this, this December because there's also, there's also a very practical reality of the transforming power that Christmas has in our life every single day. Not just in December, not, not just during this holiday season, this Christmas season, but there's a, there's a powerful, practical, transforming uh, presence of, of God, the Word of God, that, that works in our hearts every single day. And so each Sunday... Throughout the month of December, we're going to look at Christmas and the Christmas story from the perspective of God's interaction with Mary and Joseph to fulfill his perfect will for their lives. And then we're going to take it another step further. As we look at the Christmas story, we're going to take it another step forward because, further because we're going to look at the way God interacts with us to fulfill his perfect will in our lives as well. Amen. And so this morning we want to begin with Christmas, an illustration of free will. Christmas, an illustration of free will. I want you to take a look with me as we kind of get this started this morning. God revealing to Mary her role in his plan of salvation. That's the first thing we're going to look at this morning. How God revealed to Mary her role, the role that she had in God's plan of salvation. And so I want you to look with me, Luke chapter 1. And look down till you find verse 26. Luke chapter 1 and verse 26. I want to begin reading there. I'm going to be reading out of the New King James Version uh, this morning. And it says, Now in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and having come in, the angel uh, said to her, Rejoice, highly favored one, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. But when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and considered what manner of greeting this was. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there will be no end. Then Mary said to the angel, how can this be since I do not know a man? And the angel answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore also, that Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. Now indeed, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age, and this is now the sixth month for her who was called barren. For with God, nothing will be impossible." 
for with God nothing will be impossible. Will you say that verse with me this morning? Are you ready? For with God nothing will be impossible. Verse 38, then Mary said, behold, the maidservant of the Lord, let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. Let's pray. Precious heavenly father, this story, this account of the birth and life of Jesus Christ is so precious to us. We revere, dear Lord God, the story because it brings to us an understanding of how we were brought from death to life, dear Lord God. It helps us to understand, dear Lord God, your will for us and your love for us and how great that love is that you sent Jesus to rescue us and redeem us. Now, Lord God, speak to our heart, Father God. Minister to us in the way only you can, Father, as you bring glory and honor to your name this day and minister to our hearts and lives your truth for it's in Jesus name we pray and the saints of God said amen, amen. you see God saw something in Mary that she didn't see in herself God saw something in that young woman that young Jewish girl that Mary didn't understand that Mary didn't realize that she didn't know or understand about herself See, Gabriel let Mary know that she was highly favored by God, right? Isn't that what Gabriel said as he came in? You're highly favored by God. But Mary didn't see herself warranting any special recognition. I want you to think about that for just a moment. Here was this young Jewish girl. The angel comes in to speak to her. And as he says, you're highly favored by God, look at Mary's response. She doesn't see that about herself. She doesn't understand that there's anything about her that would warrant any special recognition, any special favor from God. An angel sent by God was standing in front of her, but her humility and in her humility, she was more amazed about the greeting than she was about the angel. Just think about that for a moment. She didn't fall down. She didn't, uh, she didn't uh, just uh, freak out at the fact that there was an angel there. Uh, she was more concerned about the fact that this angel coming from God was bestowing on her the favor of God. If you read that scripture verse, it makes it clear that's what she's amazed about. Not the angelic visitation, but that anybody would say to her, Mary, you have God's favor on your life. She didn't see that about herself. You see, God wasn't looking for a superstar. God wasn't looking for a superstar. He wasn't looking for someone with a big name. He wasn't looking for somebody who already had status in the community. What was he looking for? God was looking for the kind of strength, character, and compassion that Mary already possessed. God knew the heart of Mary. Are you hearing what pastor's saying this morning? God understood this young woman better than she understood herself. And God knew because God always knows and he's perfect in everything that he does. And I pray the Holy Spirit is speaking to your heart right now about how perfect God is and everything he desires for you and I. He knew Mary, he understood her, and he knew she was the perfect choice for what he was calling her to do, the plan he was revealing about her role in his plan of salvation. Gabriel was there to reveal God's plan to Mary. Look at verses 31, 32, 33. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus, Savior, Deliverer, Deliverer. He will be great and he will be called the son of the highest and the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom there will be no end. What was God calling Mary to do? God was calling Mary to give birth to the Messiah. The one who had been prophesied about down through all of the ages of the Old Testament. Mary was the one. She was chosen to give birth to the Savior of Israel. But she didn't even understand that. And it was going to go beyond even that understanding. She was called to give birth to the Savior of the world. And to nurture that little life, that young life, that fragile life. Until he was ready to accept the call that God had sent him to the world to fulfill. See, God is still in the business of revealing 
fulfilling his role, his role and his plan and our role and his plan. God's still in the business of revealing his, uh, our role in the plan that he has for us, that, that he desires for each and every one of us. God is still talking to his children today. See, as children of God, you and I are highly favored of God. I want to pause there for just a moment. I want to allow the Holy Spirit to cause that to sink deep in your spirit because the enemy has told you something different. And the enemy has caused things to happen in your life. And the enemy has caused individuals to speak things into your life that have never come from God, that was not your heavenly Father's desire for your life. And we have had a tendency to listen to those things and those negativities. We've even said things about ourselves that were never God's intention for us to speak, to hear, to understand. You and I need to understand as children of the Most High God, sitting in your Father's house this morning, you are highly faithful favored by God. Can I get a witness this morning? God loves you. He cares about you. And he knows exactly how each of us fit into his plan of salvation for the world. Did you hear what pastor just said? God knows just exactly how each and every one of us fit in his, into his plan of salvation. Not for your family. Yes, for your family, but not just for your family. Not just for your neighbors, but the plan of salvation that God has, the role that he has for you and I, how we fit into that plan of salvation for the world. Whew. Steve. We get up in the morning and we're just trying to figure out how we're going to get around and get things going because the schedule is so full in the day. And how am I going to make it to the end of this day and accomplish everything that I need to do? So my greatest vision is just today and making it work. But God has a greater plan for you, brother. God has a greater plan for you, sister. It's not just all about paying the bills. Come on. It's not just about family relationships. Come on. It's not just about our likes and dislikes and all the other things that are associated with a regular life that we get so caught up in. I want to tell you this morning, it's all about Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world, God the Father, and the plan that he has for each and every one of us in his ultimate plan of salvation for the entire world. I was so blessed this morning, or yesterday morning, after breakfast, when I stood and looked out at everybody that was sitting there, all oh, the breakfast was good. The fellowship was even better. But as we began to pray about what we were going to do, we were lights. We carried the light of Jesus Christ in us. When we walked up and down those streets and those neighborhoods, we were the light of Jesus Christ shining in those neighborhoods. And I just spoke with somebody this morning that was telling me about some of the encounters that they had when they were out there. And they said to me this, they said, Pastor, it just allowed me to know how much of a need there is out there, how much of a need there is out there for the truth of the word and the light of Jesus Christ. Can somebody say amen this morning? Glory to God. Say, give him praise. Give him praise. God is so faithful. You know, just like Mary, you may be wondering what you have to offer God. What do I have to offer God? I mean, Mary stood in that little home and says, says Gabriel walked right into her, her home. You know, Sister Fran and I and some of you were with us. We had opportunity to go to Israel and we got to watch. We got to look at some of those ancient excavation sites and, and the houses and the foundation footer of those places. And you just look at them and I got to tell you, uh, they weren't impressive. They were impressive because they were that old and I love history, but I'm talking about the size. And so this, this house that Mary was in probably was a small little house because her and Joseph weren't that wealthy. Joseph was a, a, was a carpenter and a stone cutter, a, a, respected, a respected trade in his time, yes, but, but they weren't wealthy. As a matter of fact, believe it or not, the fishermen were usually more wealthy than the carpenters and the stone cutters. And there she was in her little humble abode, and in comes Gabriel, the archangel, the messenger of God, telling her that she had favor with God. I want to tell you, sometimes we begin to wonder, don't we, Tom? We begin to wonder, what, what do I have to give to God? What do I have to offer God? Sometimes it's because we're young, you're young in life, and you're wondering, instead of listening to what the pastor's saying, you're playing video games 
and exchanging messages with each other like these ladies that are sitting back here on the right hand side and we're thinking they're just I don't have anything to offer God why 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 this service ain't about me you know because I don't have anything to offer God and then we realize that God has something for us and or, or we're or we're older in age and we say boy the prime of our life has gone by and 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 I just don't have anything else to offer God you know like Larry sitting down here and Larry said Larry said I'm an old man but I love Larry because he says, I'm not old enough. I'm not too old to serve the Lord, right, Larry? I'm not too old to use my voice to sing and praise God, amen? And so we begin to wonder, we begin to think, what do I have to offer God? But we need to realize that God has a distinct purpose for each and every one of us. He has a place for us to fit in his overall plan. See, if you're willing to listen to God, he will reveal to you both his heart and his plan for your life. Amen. If we'll just listen, if we'll just listen over the din of the world, over the pressures of the world, over everything that Satan throws at us, over the demands that everybody else puts on their life, what does he speak to us? If we'll listen, he'll share his heart with us first. We'll get to know the heart of God. You know, Donna, when we know the heart of God, we know he cares about us, don't we? Amen. Well, when we understand God's heart, don't we? Then we know how he wants us to look at other people. Now, I, I know, I know, I know, I know that probably you've never felt this way. Oh, what, that's a lie. I can't lie like that. I got to tell you the truth. Every one of us have felt this way. We have saw an individual that God wants us to minister to. And our first impression was not the impression of the heart of God. Come on. Our first impression was a negative impression, a critical impression. But God, God looked at that individual and said, I love him, I love her, and I want you to reach out. I want you to love them too. And you say, Lord, how can I love them? And then all of a sudden, God begins to reveal his heart to us. Have you ever been driving down the road or walking in the aisles of a store? And all of a sudden, you have a love for somebody that you've never met before, that you've never talked to. You see somebody along the road, you see somebody in the department store, and all of a sudden, your heart just begins to fill with love for that person. And you've not even talked to them yet. You don't know them yet. You don't even know what's going on in their lives. But you just stop for a moment and pray and say, Lord, what do you want me to do? I, I remember one time I was driving down the road, and God filled me with such love for this guy. I was walking down the road. I, I, turned, I had to drive two miles down the road to find a turnaround, come back and pick him up. Because I just had such overwhelming love in my heart for this guy I never met ended up witnessing to him about the Lord Jesus Christ isn't that awesome God reveals his heart to us but along with that he reveals the plan that goes along with that heart amen God's plan for us oh it's so wonderful when we realize that God has that for us see God revealed his plan to Mary now she had a decision that she had to make Mary was not responsible for Joseph's decision though Mary had a decision she had to make, but she was not responsible for Joseph's decision. See, God was at work at Joseph's life. I want you to look with me now. Matthew chapter 1. I had you to mark that earlier. Matthew chapter 1. When you turn there, look down until you find verse 18. God was at work in Joseph's life. Matthew chapter 1, verse 18. It says, now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. After his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not wanting to make her a public example, was minded to put her away secretly, divorce her secretly. But while he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take to you Mary, your wife. For, what, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit, and she will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, Deliverer, Savior, for he will save his people from their sins. See, God sent Gabriel, the angel Gabriel, to Joseph in a way that he, Joseph, would understand. I've heard some individuals talking about this and they put greater significance on Gabriel coming to uh, Mary in a, in a 
corporeal form in a in a form that she could actually see him he was literally there they put greater significance on that and said well this is a lesser visitation because Gabriel came to Joseph in a dream but that's a complete misunderstanding of what happened here God sent Gabriel to Joseph in a way that he would understand let me explain that see God sent Gabriel to Joseph in a dream isn't that what the scripture says he sent him to him in a dream listen over, over 65 times in the Old Testament, God used dreams to reveal his plans to prominent men, men of God, men that he wanted them to understand what he wanted them to do, how he wanted them to go, the decisions he wanted them to make. 65 times in the Old Testament, God used dreams to reveal himself, his plan, his will uh, to men in the Old Testament. Even today, even today in the Middle East, men revere dreams as the way that God reveals himself to them. It's so wrapped up in the culture, so wrapped up in the culture of the Middle East that men, whenever they have dreams about God, about divinity, they accept those, they hear those, they receive those. As a matter of fact, our missionaries keep sending us back reports of former Muslims who were, who, who were radically opposed to Jesus Christ. As a matter of fact, some of them, their wives were saved, going to church and have to go home and, and fear from their husbands and have beat from their husbands and, and did not believe, their husbands did not believe uh, because they just could not accept that angry, uh, frustrated. Matter of fact, one of the men was so frustrated that he had already promised that he was going to kill his wife's pastor. He was already making uh, not only threats but plans to kill his wife's pastor for converting her to Christianity and taking her away from him and away from the faith. And except for the pastor and his wife and others were praying. And one night, Jesus visited him in a dream and the next day he was knocking at the pastor's house not to take his life but to ask him how he could accept this Jesus who visited him in a dream last night. I'm telling you, God sent Gabriel to Joseph in a way that he would understand and a way that he would comprehend. So God revealed his plan for Joseph through a dream. But Mary didn't know any of this. See, we know it all. We, we read it, right? Isn't it, isn't it interesting whenever you hear something on the news and then somebody comes back and they tell you about it and they say, did you hear so and so? And you say, yeah, I heard it on the news. Well, when we read it in the word of God, we say, oh yeah, that makes sense, right? Because we're after the fact we know it's written for us. But Mary didn't have a clue. She didn't know that Gabriel was sent to Joseph in a dream. She didn't know any of this. Mary didn't know that God was talking to Joseph. Mary didn't know how Joseph would handle the news that she was pregnant. She knew that he knew that, but she didn't know what his response was going to be. She didn't know how anything was going to turn out, what was going to take place. Mary couldn't wait to see how Joseph would respond. She had to make a decision for herself. Can somebody say amen this morning? Pastor, what are you talking about? Well, folks, we can't rely on the decisions of others to determine if we're going to follow God's will. We can't rely on the decisions of others to determine whether or not we are going to follow God's will for our lives. Amen? See, God may or may not speak to us through an angel or a dream. God may or may not speak to us through an angel or a dream. I just talked about the fact that in the Middle East, God's still revealing himself through dreams. I have to tell you, God's revealed himself to me through dreams, through visions, through his voice speaking to me. So far, he hasn't revealed to me in person. I don't know how I'd handle that. How about you? Sadie, you might have to pick me up off the floor after that one, you know. He may or may not reveal himself to us in those ways, but God will. God will speak to us. He will reveal his plan for us because God is still speaking to his children today. Earlier in this message, I kind of alluded to all of the din, all of the noise of the world, all of the pressure that's been put on us. You know, the enemy doesn't want you to be able to hear the voice of God. In the scripture, we hear that God spoke to Elijah, not through the fire, not through the storm, but through a still, small voice. 
Now I have to tell you, there's been a couple of times in my life the Lord shouted at me. How about you? Did God ever shout at you? You know, sometimes I can get a little hard-headed. He had to raise his voice a little bit. There was even one time that he shouted at me through Sister Fran. <laughs> We won't go into that. <laughs> but we have to be tuned in to hear what he's saying. He's speaking. He speaks to us on a regular basis. We have to be tuned in to hear what he's saying. And, and listen to what Pastor's saying right now. One of the profound ways that God speaks to us on a regular basis is through his word. If we're reading his word, God will be speaking to us through his word. And there are times that God will speak something to us through his word. And it won't be this, this aha moment. It won't be this epiphany. It's just God will just reveal something to us out of the course of us reading his word. And it'll just, it'll just be this wonderful understanding. Okay, great. And then we'll come down the road a little while. And God will bring, the Holy Spirit will bring up to us why he told us this. Because now we need to apply it over here. Amen? Sometimes we only think about hearing from God when we're right in the midst of the battle. But you know, if we're paying attention, God will reveal himself to us before we ever get to the battle so that when we're in the battle, we have the strength of his word to stand on to see us through the battle. Can somebody say amen? Amen. Praise God. Praise God. You know, in Numbers, I think it's 1129. Numbers 1129. That's right, Numbers eleven twenty nine. I know the plans that I have for you, saith the Lord. Jeremiah twenty nine eleven. I had it backwards. Thank you. Even the wrong book. Jeremiah uh, twenty nine eleven. I know the plans that I have for you, say the Lord. Right. Well, there was a time when I was heading into a major trial in my life, and the Holy Spirit was speaking to me about that chapter in the Bible. And I turned there and I automatically went to verse 11, right? And I said, oh, praise God. No, the Lord said, no, back up. That's not where I'm leading you. Back up. And went back up to the part where he's talking about the 70 years of trouble. 70 years of difficulty. No, Lord, I want to come back down to, right? I want to come back down to verse 29, right? And the Lord said, no, go back and read this. And God been speaking to my heart before the trouble ever came. You're about to go through some really deep water. You're about ready to go through real challenge. And he spoke to me. He said, if you'll trust me and stay sweet in your spirit and don't react, but act according to how I guide you, now you can go down and read verse 29. Or, yeah, verse, yeah, verse 29. Yeah, verse 29. I know the plans I have for you saith the Lord. Folks, we need to understand that God has a plan for our lives. But we've got to listen to him revealing to us that plan and that purpose if we're going to stay in line with him. I listen to people all the time that are totally frustrated with God. That they say, God's not listening. God's not there. God's not paying attention. God gives me good things and then takes it away from me and, and laughs at me while he does it. That's not the heart of God. We need to understand that that's not God. If the enemy tries to lie to us, we need to realize that it's a lie that that's not God. And somebody say, well, why is this happening in my life? Well, there's a couple of things, but I'm going to boil it down to two this morning. One is we're simply trying to do it our way and asking God to bless it. Amen or oh me. You know, Pastor, I'm going to preach it right. Pre preach it straight. Either we're doing our own thing and then asking God to bless it. Or, like Job, we're in the middle of a trial that's going to lead to our strengthening, our blessing, our preparation for the blessings that God has in our life. Can I get an amen this morning? 
And so it's so important for us. We can't rely on the decisions that are other making. We can't say, well, so-and-so did this, so now I can't do that. And so-and-so stopped me from doing this. It was God's will for my life, but so-and-so didn't do what they did, were supposed to do, so now I can't do what I'm supposed to do. We need to understand that God knows all of that stuff. Can I get a witness? We have to do what God is revealing to us. Then we have to decide to follow God's will no matter what anyone else is doing. Mary, Mary's decision was based on her desire to honor God with her life. See, Mary and Joseph, Mary and Joseph honored God with their free will. Remember I said this message was an illustration, Christmas, an illustration of free will. Mary and Joseph decided to honor God, honored God with their free will. See, Mary had questions, didn't she? We read it right from the text. Mary had questions. But once she understood God's plan, she stepped forward in faith to follow God's will. Look back at verse 38 again. Luke chapter 1 verse 38. It says, Then Mary said, Behold the maid servant of the Lord. The maid servant of the Lord. The bond servant of the Lord. The slave of the Lord. I am committing myself to you as a love slave to do just exactly what your will is. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. Joseph, like most men, was trying to fix the problem. So ladies, we have questions sometimes, right? You have questions. God's doing some things and you got some questions. How many of y'all know that God is not shook up by questions? We can ask him anything we want to ask him, but we got to ask them in faith, not in doubt, not in fear, amen? And so then we get to Joseph and Joseph's acting like most men. He's trying to fix the problem, right? He's pondering. He's working on it. How can I angle this? What can I do? Should I put her away secretly? How should I handle this? I got to get this problem fixed. And, and, and then, then, then once he heard from God, he was on board with God's plan. No questions asked. Matthew chapter 1 verses 24 and 25. Then Joseph being aroused from sleep did as the angel of the Lord commanded him and took to him his wife and did not know her till she had brought forth her firstborn son and he called his name name Jesus. You know, Gabriel spoke to Mary with confidence in the plan, didn't he? Let's go back and look for just a moment. Luke chapter 1 verse 31, Gabriel speaking to Mary. There's such confidence in his voice, such confidence in his laying out this plan. He says, and behold, you will conceive in your womb and behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. You know, God knows without a doubt the best course of action in every situation, doesn't he? Amen. Listen, when, when God speaks in our lives, God doesn't say, well, you know, looking at your situation, I think maybe this could be the best course of action, but, but I don't know. You might want to consider this. You might want to look at that and think about this other thing over here and then go talk to Bobby Sue because Bobby Sue, she would know when God speaks to us, he knows what the best course of action is, doesn't he? There's no doubt. So whenever Gabriel went to Mary, he knew just exactly what needed to take place. There's such confidence in his voice. He said, no, this is what needs to happen. This is what needs to take place. This is the direction it's going to go. Doesn't it birth confidence in us when we know that God is confident in his plan for our lives? He's not worried. He's not wondering. You know, the great thing I like about it is I've never, God never, absolutely never was up in heaven and said, hmm, I never thought of that. So there's such a confidence, but we still need to determine to follow his will or not. God knows what the right thing to do is. He's willing to reveal it to us, but you and I still have that ability. You and I still have to make the decision, are we going to follow God's will or not? That's free will. We have the opportunity to choose for ourselves. You know, we, we make it a whole lot more complicated than it needs to be. We really do. We make it a whole lot more complicated than it needs to be. God lays on our heart to do something. Then the enemy starts talking to us. You know, you see those commercials, you know, the devil on one side and the angel on the other side, you know. I still think it's better to drink real milk, but, you know... <laughs> 
We make it real complicated. If we read the word and the word is very clear about something, then there's no reason for us to wonder about it, doubt it, question it, right? I, I just, I just, I just find it, I, I'll be, be honest, I just find it so humorous whenever I talk to individuals and they say, well, you know, this group of people, they translate that scripture this way and this group of people translate that scripture this way over here and so I'm not quite sure what God is saying. The word is clear. The word is clear. Now, now listen to pastor's heart right now. Listen to pastor's heart right now. You don't know what you don't know until you know it. Okay. Think about that for just a moment. And so if you have a partial understanding of what the word means, then you interpret it according to your partial understanding. If you have a fuller understanding of what the word means, then you interpret the word according to that fuller understanding, correct? And I have, I have a number of good Christian brothers and sisters whom I love dearly and they love me, right? But they have a more limited, now you're going to say this is prideful. No, I'm not being prideful. They have a more limited understanding of some things in the word of God because they've not experienced it for themselves. Once you experience it for yourself, you know what that translation of that means. I'm, I'm in hot water to here. Let me just climb in just a little bit deeper. Okay. Those, those individuals who interpret the word of God and they say, Jesus is a God of love. And since he's a God of love, he accepts everybody as they are. That's a wrong interpretation. Jesus loves everybody as they are. He knows where they are out of his love, but he doesn't accept their situation. He loves them so much, he wants them to come into the fullness of whom he created them to be. Can somebody say amen to that? So there's a limited understanding. Those individuals, they love the Lord, right? But they don't understand what the scripture says in those areas. Those individuals that say that the gifts of the Spirit were for another day, right? That the baptism in the Holy Spirit was for days past, right? I love those individuals. God loves them. But the reality is, until you've received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you don't fully understand what that's all about. And I got to tell you, if what I've accepted, what I've received, what I've been empowered with is for something in the past, then somebody must have transported me to the future. Because I know and understand that the power of the Holy Spirit is for today. The baptism of the Holy Spirit is for today. Can somebody say amen? amen. Paul dealt with this. He said in the, in, in, in the gospel, not in the gospel, he said in the epistle, he said that there are those that don't understand what I'm saying. But to the, to the level you have understanding, let us agree to the level that you have understanding and then God will reveal the rest of this to you. Amen? I, I remember a number of years ago, I'm not digressing, this is all part of it, a number of years ago, I was on a, uh, a council, a, uh, a ministerial association with, with brothers and sisters from all Christian faith denominations. And there was a Presbyterian pastor there that I got to be really good friends with. And we would preach on every Thanksgiving. We would move from church to church and preach the Thanksgiving service at the various churches. And this one Thanksgiving service, God, God led me to preach on divine healing in the Presbyterian church. And so, some of y'all don't understand, but I've got to tell you. This. <laughs> and so, man, I preached it. Now, this brother was a wonderful brother, but he was known for falling asleep when somebody else was preaching. I watched him do it year after year after year, right? So I get up to preach and, and the anointing just falls on Pastor Hensel and I begin to preach like I'm in my own church. 
and I'm just preaching the word and the power of God and the ability of God to heal well he woke up real fast <laughs> and he was listening to every word that I said and it wasn't but about four or five months after that that the Lord called Sister Fran and I to leave that church and come to Christian Life Assembly of God. And I was going around meeting with my pastor friends, making sure they knew that I was going to be leaving the area and relaying some responsibilities, transferring some responsibilities that I had in the community to others. And he says, oh man, John. He said, I'm so sad to hear this. He said, because I was just at the point that I wanted to talk to you more about the Holy Spirit. Folks, what we need to realize is that the Word of God is not confusing. The Word of God is relevant and it's true and the Holy Spirit will make the Word clear to us if we really want to understand what the Word of God says. Amen? And whenever we're adhering to the Word, when we're listening to the Word, when we're studying the Word, then the Holy Spirit comes alongside that Word and then speaks in greater detail into our lives the things that we need to know so that we can fulfill God's purpose and God's plan for our lives. Can I get a witness on that? See, Joseph and Mary made the choice to honor God. Amen? Amen. And we see in the lives of Joseph and Mary a perfect illustration of free will. God revealed his plan to them, right? God let them know what he, what their place, their role was in his pl divine plan of salvation for the world. They each had to decide for themselves whether to follow God's will or not. Sir, ma'am, husband, wife, you have to decide for yourself. If you're going to follow God's will and plan for your life. Young people, your mom and dad can't decide for you. You have to decide for yourself. Are you going to follow God's will and plan for your life? Amen. We, we have to decide for ourselves. We have to make that decision for ourselves if we're going to follow God's will or not. Then they, Joseph and Mary, then they chose to give the gift of their free will back to God. The gift of their free will back to God. You know, God has given us everything. We sing that one song that the breath that we breathe, right? The very breath that we breathe. Everything. Everything. I remember a story a number of years ago that some scientists had decided that they didn't need God anymore. And so they drew straws to figure out which scientist was going to go and tell God that they didn't need him anymore. So the one scientist drew the short straw and he said, okay. So he goes to meet with God and he said, God, we just want to let you know that we appreciate everything you've done for us, but we've got it from here. We've just advanced so much in our understanding and scientific ability. We've got it. We don't need you anymore. And God says, is that right? He said, yeah, I don't mean to hurt your feelings, but that's right. He said, okay. He said, okay, let's, let's go. Let's have a little challenge here. He said, all right. He said, let's both create a man. And the scientist said, okay, I'm going back to my lab. He said, no, 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 no. You create a man the same way I did. Right? So the scientist scratched his head, said, okay. So he gets down, he starts gathering up a pile of dirt. And the Lord looks out and says, no, wait a second, get your own dirt. <laughs> That's the reality. God, everything we have, God has given to us. Everything we have belongs to him, right? It all belongs to him. But listen to what he did. This is so awesome. When God created us, Pete, he gave us a free will. He gave us a free will. He created us, Frank, and then he gave us our life. And gave us the free will to choose what to do with that life. So the only thing that I have the only thing I can have that I can give back to him is my life. Is my life. And I got the free will. God's got the perfect plan. The perfect plan. So many times, Roy, I've gotten off a track of God's perfect plan for my life. And he has guided me back on again because he wants me to make the right choices and the right decisions. But I have a gift I can give to him.
At Christmas time, I have a gift I can give to him. I can choose from my free will to give the gift of my life back to him again. Free will gives us the ability to give the gift of our lives back to God. The Christmas story is such a perfect illustration of free will. Amen? So this morning, as we're here in God's presence, and he's been ministering to us all throughout this service, as we start this Christmas season, I think the Holy Spirit would ask us this, just this simple question. What are you going to do with your free will? What choice are you going to make with the gift of free will that the Heavenly Father has given you and I through the gift of His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ? See, before Jesus died on the cross, we all belonged to the enemy. Before I met Jesus Christ at an old-fashioned altar and gave my heart and life to Him, I belonged to the enemy. But then whenever he wiped all of my sin clean, whenever he came and lived in me through the Holy Spirit, now I am a new creation. Amen. Behold, all things have been made new. And I have once again the choice of free will. I'm giving my life back to Jesus. Amen. Amen. I'm giving my life back to Jesus. And the reality, Kay, I have to do it every day. I've got to choose every morning. This day, this day, I'm going to serve the Lord. This day, I'm going to live for Jesus. This day, I'm going to do his perfect will. Amen.